Hi and welcome to this uh, course about teaching you how to use SAP Cloud Platform Integration. In this first module I'll introduce the platform, why it's re relevant and what's really going on with it. So why do you want to use uh, Cloud SAP Cloud Platform Integration or CPI? Um, I'd say there's quite a lot of, of drivers that, that make this uh, an interesting uh, tool to, to start using. So customers is obviously moving to the cloud and a lot of the cloud integration is different than the on-premise integration. So on-premise integration there, you you have more flexibility to actually create interfaces and say, okay, if we are going to deliver these data to our internal system, we can actually just code an interface that actually give us these data. Whereas in the cloud, it's just a public API you can use. And if it's not suitable, you would have to pay whatever service provider to update the interface to something more meaningful. But that's a bit challenging uh, in many cases. <coughs> Um, I'd say it's also, uh, yeah, if you see at, at the market uh, as a whole on what other integration providers and ERP vendors are providing, they also have cloud products that are cloud integration things. And well, yeah, if everybody else has it, you also need to have it and you need to figure out what's actually the right way of handling this and where it does make sense. So. The, a lot of this is different than what you'd see on the on-premise system. And the big drivers also, SAP has the intelligent enterprise, uh, their full motto about integrating all of your ERP applications uh, and line of business application into one coherent, coherent uh, application suite in just a few clicks. Um, I guess that's the vision, making it a lot easier to do. But obviously, there's going to be a bit of challenge in really getting it to there. But for that to work, SAP needs to have a strong cloud platform and, uh, tool that actually allow them to integrate products faster. And one of the, the things they have is they have delivered some pre-delivered content that actually allow you to do an integration a lot faster in some of these areas. It's also cheaper to get started with, uh, at least compared to some of the on-premise tools where you have to buy for a lot of, you have to pay for installation, you have to pay for uh, installing uh, it and a server license and that server license is, is pretty expensive. Uh, at least on the, the PO side, and I would imagine that's a similar price if you go to all the other vendors. Um, in the CPI world, you, I think you can start for getting a tenant for like 600 euros a month, which is a whole different uh, place compared to a, a PO system. Uh, the only bad thing this is that there's currently no training system and that's also why I'm not able to provide it. Maybe at some point in time there will be a, a way that you can just purchase for a month a training system that you can use but I am not sure wh when that would happen, if that would happen. But I really hope that SAP will make that move because obviously the more people that get the hand on the cloud platform integration the better and the more users can actually see what's going on. So some of the, the key benefits of, of the platform, and I've been on two different projects where we've used it, and I can definitely see there's some, some, some things that are really good. Um, and this is, you have really a flexible deployment. So in, in a PI world, you were kind of stuck in having to define a specific scenario and you had to run it in that this specific case and if it did not follow that that flow uh, routing interfaces and then uh, some modules it was really difficult to actually create uh, some some shared or to to make your flow work so if you had to to do updates 
uh, in different locations based on that update you had to to update uh, or send a, a value somewhere else that became really difficult whereas in this newer flow it in CPI it's more flexible you can just say oh I just need to add some extra elements and you can just add it in in the the pipeline instead of in PI to say okay so now we found out we need to update back to SAP these statuses and we had to figure out how we actually do that in a simple generic way in CPI you can just say oh we will just create a new flow link it wait for instance the process at direct adapter and then you can actually run data there um, so I've been able to actually split out a lot of the component into process direct adapters and the process direct adapter the is an internal one that actually allow you to to scale the content in so or make functions that actually make make it easy to to run these things um, and there's a, a full module on that one just to to give you some ideas on how that actually works um, there's the some pre-delivered content that actually give you uh, enable you to actually see um, well, at, at one first figure out how you're actually using the SAP uh, platform um, and get this this delivered and just start using it. Hopefully it will use and some of them you can make modifications in, whereas other it's more like a template. You can see, okay, this is what the SAP has created for this and then we want to create our own. And then, as we talked about earlier, there's a, a flexible pricing. You're just paying for the resources that you're using. And the more you're using, the more you just need to pay. So it's, it is able to actually scale up as, as you go uh, along the process. So how about uh, SAP PIPO? Um, if you're using uh, PI, uh, you've probably seen that the, the amount of changes that are happening on the platform lately has, has gone down as SAP is focusing more and more of the development effort on uh, the cloud platform. And I think that is what we will see. And, and it makes perfectly sense that there's a lot more capability to, to enhance the, the CPI compared to the PI because in the PI you would have if you implemented a new functionality there and it needed to be something radical, people would do a migration and that would anyway take 10 years uh, before that's really implemented. So it's a lot easier to develop in the CPI and deploy content there. There is two things that actually, yeah, so, so SAP obviously have a cloud first. So all of the developments go into cloud integration. And then they are actually taking some of these things and allow you to run it on your PI system. So you can actually run uh, on-premise content using this platform and that makes it really easy to, to get started and, uh, and deploy. So uh, there's a, a section where you can run CPI content on your PO system and for scenarios where you're using on-premise resources where you, for instance, if you have the, the standard license, uh, or you all in the PI you have already paid for the the, the core based license, uh, so you already have the license, so there's no need to run it in the the cloud. Obviously, it will still be innovated. Run you would have uh, f more developments going on in the cloud uh, to to handle it there. Um, but yeah. Take a look at uh, some of those uh, those areas, um, and we'll see PI for the next 10, uh, 15 years still, and it will still be useful. And there is definitely scenarios where it's a lot easier to do it in, in PI compared to to CPI, because it's just the the, the way of the these data handles. So let's talk a little about the. Um, the cloud platform architecture and obviously there you can be talking three days about what this is but I just wanted to give you a short overview of how this looks so in general you have your CPI or cloud platform uh, 
system. You may have it in multiple uh, regions. You may have multiple global accounts that are each covering a specific license, a specific focus area, or some have moved it all into one global account. And then you may also have a different account for Asia, Google Cloud Platform and Asia. And I think those also some, some other ones that were in the roadmap um, of these hyperscalers if you wanted to run the CPI on those platforms. Um, so you actually had the option of, of running it on multiple locations. Um, you would then, for each of these, you would have an account a CPI account, a tenant, and the tenant then consists of, of two parts, uh, at, uh, subscriptions, and under this you would actually be able to find that you have a map, that's the runtime thing, and you got a developer tenant. So each of, for each CPI system you would have these uh, things. Let me just try to show you that. Um, you also have the, the user administration for each of these sub accounts and you as a user you need to give users access to ESP messaging send if they wanted to trigger any messages. The administration and system developers is also at least if you're doing development pretty interesting obviously when you're going to to your production system, you may want to consider what is actually the right roles that we should give our users. But let me just show you this flow. So here we have my global account. And here I have my one sub account. This is my uh, partner system. Obviously, all the other ones would be called something differently. So uh, and then I can go under my subscription. I can see I got this uh, user interface and I got the the runtime component of this um, and see when they were restarted hmm. and then we talked about uh, authorizations and you then have under here you have all the different users you have I think I created a sample too. Um, so uh, you can create groups, assign these groups to some specific users, uh, or unassign them if you want to. Um, and that gives you actually the option to, to see what's going on and understand uh, the users. The, I'm not sure if you can go in and see which users have assigned a specific role um, in this uh, the system, but probably you want to create a user that's called HCI developer that have the different role that you can then assign it to the relevant parties. We talked about the pre-delivered content, and I think that is actually one of the the key benefits of the CPI. So let's just have a look at that. So here we have our uh, CPI tenant. We have uh, the, the discoverer part. And in here, we have a lot of the, the pre-delivered contents. So we can see all the here, there's, uh, I don't know, 254 uh, different uh, pre-delivered content. You can go in and see what is a PS created of these things. So in some cases, you can see it. Um, I'm not sure on, uh, as a partner what you can actually submit and what it looks like. Um, so here we can see they have created a message mapping. Oh, it's creating this down here. You have, so this actually gives you quite a good understanding of what kind of structure is P have created for this and how they are uh, developing. So uh, what you then do is if you say this is good, you would just say copy. And then this is copied into your workspace. So if we look at my current workspace, I would then see uh, this one we just added uh, right now. So one I wanted to, one pre-delivered content that's really good is this one, uh, Exemplar. And when you look at that one, it contains a lot of uh, different 
information about what is the PF uh, scene that users are giving, how it works, what you can actually do with it. Um, you can see external parameters. So this really gives you a good understanding about getting started, understanding the, the platform, and if you have any specific ideas, uh, understand what data would look like, then try to check this, uh, this one out and see if you can find something that makes sense in that case. You cannot run, some of them you can run, but not all of them, and they would send an email with the results that they are getting. But I guess when you have the trace mode, then you can also uh, switch that one on. Um, so the next one we have to look at this, uh, oh, this one, the, the design time area. And we'll go more into detail in, in the next uh, module where we'll actually show you how you can create a flow. But this is actually where you can see what's going on. You can uh, create your own content. So up here it's just a list of templates that you can use. And here you can actually see what's going on in it. Um, in the development environment, um, if you're looking at old posts, you may see that there's a, a Eclipse plugin. And that one has been deprecated for, I, th I think, in 2018. Um, so now all development is going on in the, this, uh, yeah, this uh, web ED IDE. Um, and that makes some development tasks a lot easier because you just have one place where everything is going on in. Um, SAP, uh, so the only thing you need to, to use the Eclipse plugin for is to deploy to develop adapters and components, um, and it's deprecated for all other scenarios. There's a monitor and admin uh, setting that will allow you to actually monitor what's going on in your process, uh, in your landscape, what you, how much you have deployed, where you're seeing errors. You can add multiple monitors if you wanted to see more. Um, in the settings pa page, you can set up information to log on to your uh, ERP system, uh, your PI system. The, you can set up some transport, how you want to do transports with this. Do you want to use the, the cloud transport system, the this CTS, or some other system, maybe the, the FIGAF uh, transport system? Um, one thing I just want to advise you on is when you have your S user, you can log into this uh, this location, and with that you can actually get a um, single sign-on password. And this single sign-on, uh, once you're logging in on different system, you can then select which certificate makes sense, and then you log in with that one. So that is saving me a lot of time just having that one to to run. Um, so you once you're going through this one, fill in your username and password, you can download the certificate, and then you can apply to your browsers. And then whenever the system sees you have one of these browsers, you can actually upload it. So uh, this saves a lot of time in the, the process. So uh, yeah, I would strongly encourage you to try that out. And I think now we're ready to, to go to the next module and really create something new for you. So thank you.